Good morning and welcome to Immigration Wednesdays. I'm Jeff Peek with the Law Office of Peek and Tonin, Los Abogados Hueros. And today we're going to be coming to you with the second part of a two-part series about violent crimes and how they affect immigrants. Last week we talked about what happens if you are charged with a violent crime, such as domestic violence or aggravated assault. Today we're going to talk about if you were the victim of one of those crimes and what options that might possibly open the door for you to be able to possibly apply for some kind of status or residency. So the first thing to know is there's two pathways. One has, is called a U visa and the other one's called VAWA. Now VAWA is an acronym that stands for Violence Against Women Act, V-A-W-A. -A. And even though it's the Violence Against Women Act, you can also qualify even if you're a man. We'll talk about U visa first. So first of all, to be eligible for the U visa, you have to be a victim of typically what I call a violent crime. There's a list of crimes that makes one eligible, but I'm going to talk about, even though there's like 18 crimes on the list, I'm going to talk about the ones that are mo most common that we see here in Texas. And that is a, vi a victim of domestic violence and a victim of a, a vi violent crime that's a felony. The most violent crime, common violent crimes that are felonies are, again, domestic violence, assault by strangulation, which is a form of domestic violence, aggravated assault, and of course, uh, uh, indecency by contact or sexual assault, otherwise known as rape, and of course any time of attempted murder. Those all would qualify. Now, also an aggravated robbery where somebody steals something using the threat of violence or actual violence or weapons in the course of, of that robbery would also be a violent crime. There's others such as kidnapping and trafficking. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those because they're less, very less common. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us or you can look on USCIS's website under U visa to see which qualifying crimes there are. But real quickly, I want to recap because some people don't realize uh, domestic violence is very obvious. It's usually in a dating relationship or a spousal relationship where violence happens. And that can be a misdemeanor, which it most commonly is, but sometimes can be a felony. So if you have any kind of domestic violence situation, that's one to pay attention to. Now here's the thing. You not only have to be a victim, you have to cooperate with the police when they come and do their investigation, whether it's with a responding officer or a detective. You have to stay cooperating through the court process with the prosecutor's office. So a lot of times people are victims. They call the police or the police are called. They cooperate with the police when they come. But by the time it gets to the court, maybe they're ready to have the charges dropped. Maybe they've reconciled. Maybe they just don't want to be involved. Maybe they just disappeared for whatever reason. That's not going to qualify the U visa if, if the qualifying courts or the prosecutors or the police don't feel that you cooperated fully until the very end of that process, okay? So remember, you have to be a victim, that's the most important part. You have to cooperate both with police and prosecutors till the very end of the case. Now, the person doesn't have to necessarily be convicted, but your cooperation has to be complete, okay? At the end of the day, you're gonna be going back to the police or the prosecutors to ask them to verify that you indeed cooperated. And if they don't feel you have, for whatever reason, they will not be willing to sign the form that you need to be able to continue on with the, the U visa process. Now, crimes that can very quickly become felonies. We talked last week about what makes something an aggravated assault. It could be a threat. It doesn't have to be actual. It can clearly be using an object or a weapon, such as a gun or a knife. We talked about guns and obviously somebody just pointing a gun at you and threatening you. That could be an aggravated assault, obviously, if you have fear of serious bodily injury. But even simpler objects, such as this is a broom handle or a mop handle that's metal. Well, you could do some serious damage with this. You could hit somebody in the head, cause brain injury, break bones. This could be a deadly weapon. Even something as simple as a beer bottle we talked about last week, using a bar fight, or even a rock. Uh, those are all objects I've seen over the years be classified as deadly weapons. So the important thing to know is if you're an immigrant, you've been a victim, check with a lawyer. Uh, we can look at the police report, we can talk to the prosecutors and figure out how they're classifying the crime and be able to tell you, are you eligible for this U visa? And you do not have to wait till the case is over in order to engage a lawyer or approach the prosecutor and ask about that, okay? Now you might want to be careful about how you do that. You certainly don't want to plant the idea in the prosecutor's mind that you're a victim only because you're trying to get immigration status. And the other pathway, we've talked about the U visa now, which eventually, once you've filed that, you get yourself in line. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a line to get a U visa. People are saying it could take anywhere as long as six or seven years. Uh, so the sooner you file, the better. Uh, there's a lot of great benefits from the U visa. They can waive all sorts of illegal presence, even prior criminal actions, even deportation. So you certainly want to look into that if you don't have any other options and you've been a victim. Uh, that's one path. The other path is for people who are married to permanent residents and citizens, okay? Now this is important. You're only eligible for this VAWA path if you're actually married legally to a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Now, 
Doesn't mean you won't be eligible for the U visa, you could be eligible for both, but the, the VAWA process is so much better because it goes directly to residency. You don't have to wait in line, line for a super long time like you do with the U visa. Uh, and sometimes you don't even, the level of violence and threats and things that happen don't need to necessarily rise as serious as it does with the U visa, okay? For example, people could qualify potentially for VAWA just with threats of violence, even at the misdemeanor level, or threats of deportation, or, or manipulating the relationship such so they don't let you have access to bank accounts, or they threaten you um, with getting you fired and, and turning you in. There's all sorts of things that can be considered uh, that will not be considered under U visa, they could be considered under VAWA as evidence uh, that you were a victim of intimidation, and even not, if it's not physical violence, potentially even uh, psychological violence or other kinds of acts of aggression. Uh, so it's certainly worth knowing about if you know anybody who's married to a permanent resident or citizen and has been a victim of such things, you want to talk to a lawyer if there's a chance they might want to be able to move forward with that and get residency. And again, the other thing about VAWA is you don't have to be arrested with the crime. On the U visa side, the person has to be charged with the crime and the cooperation has to happen in the prosecution court context. In VAWA, you don't, the case doesn't even have to go to court. It could be a person who suffered domestic violence and never called the police, but yet they've been hit or abused or pushed or threatened many, many times, but never called the police. These per people can possibly still get their residency, okay? Again, they have to be married to a U.S. citizen or resident, so that's important to know. So we hope this information is helpful. We hope if you know somebody who's, who's in these situations, you can ask them to reach out to us. We'd love to be helped. We've helped many victims over the years be able to win status, not just for them, sometimes for their children, and sometimes even for their spouses. Uh, and it's a, it's a great honor to be able to do that. Again, my name is Jeff Peek with Peek and & Tolan, and we'll see you next Wednesday.